evening, Hillary. Welcome to Newsmakers, where we debate the stories that defined the week. It's a pleasure to introduce our panel, the Chief Executive of Orion and the Chair of ECA, Roger Sutton, freelance journalist with the NBR, the property investor and MG Business, Chris Hutching, and former MP, the Chairman of ECAN, Alec Needle. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, the long and winding saga over perk abusing MPs has dominated the news agenda for another week, and hogging the headlines, of course, has been the far brand free radical from Te Tai Tokarau, MP Hone Harawera. Was the nation right to explode in horror at his R18 ranting racist email? And has the Māori Party failed to show responsive leadership to this? Alec. Well, first of all, for Hone, um, I think that it was disrespectful to leave his delegation. When you go on those delegations, and I've been on them, it's very clear that you are required to form part of the delegation. He was the leader of the delegation, of all things, and he sneaked off to Paris for a day out with his wife. Unacceptable, Hone. Sorry, old son. Um, as far as uh, going to Hawaii on the way home is concerned, well, if that's the quickest trip back to New Zealand, um, I hope that he enjoyed his surfing. But uh, Honey, bad call, old son. How do you see it, Chris? Uh, yeah, I don't think he's uh, up to the mark. He shouldn't have done that. Um, the kind of anger that we see from Honey um, and his whole family, for that matter, uh, is not unique to, uh, to Maori representatives, though. It's uh, often people on the fringe of society have that attitude that, you know, they've been ripped off and, by golly, they're going to rip someone else off. Um, it just doesn't become a so-called leader of, of um, society. I've often thought the Harawiras are a bit like New Zealand's answer to the Osbournes. They need a TV show, don't they? They need a reality TV show. Fly on the wall stuff would be fun, surely. Um, how appalled are you by his conduct? I, th I think there is actually a different standard of behaviour required by you know, someone who's an MP. You know? An MP, I think, is a very grand, responsible sort of role. And um, when you sign up for being you know, a Member of Parliament, there's a different level of behaviour required, and he has not shown that level of behaviour. And what's more, he doesn't seem to get that. He doesn't seem to understand. He goes off on those trips, which may not be the most exciting trips in the world, but you actually do as you're told, you be an ambassador, you listen, you engage. And I guess I'd be concerned about what his whole decision-making ability is. You know, if he's in Parliament in a select committee, is he actually interested? What, what, would, what, would, what would tells me out of this? He doesn't actually care. He just cares about his own particular sort of agenda and his own needs, and he's not interested in the bigger picture. So. I am pretty appalled, actually. But it's all very well us uh, tutting here like this, Roger, because um, I don't think he's going to necessarily lose a lot of support amongst his own people. Uh, there will be an element uh, of his constituents that think that way and will support him. And uh, let's face it, well, I can't remember what their percentage was, but it's sort of around about the 5%, wasn't it? Mm. Um, so it's not as though it really matters too much that he's offending 90% of Kiwis. He's got the electorate up north, though, hasn't he? Northern Maori, Te yes. Tokara. What does it say about the far north? If they rally behind this guy? Oh, no, people rally behind uh, rebels in Parliament. That's the reality of life. Uh, I mean, I was such a well-behaved little fellow. Oh, you were. And, and one day I got thrown out of Parliament. I had letters congratulating me. <laughs> you know, and I thought, this is nonsense. That's not really what I'm there for. Yeah. And Honey is a public figure now. He can't act like a hoon. And that's the reality of it. He's, he's, he's acting like, uh, like a hoon. Of course, on the day that um, he was meant to apologise. Uh, he then, after apologising for his language, uh, suggested that Phil Goff and his mates should be shot. Um, and it's interesting that the Labour Party leader has gone hammer and tongs about the need for Honey to be expelled by the Māori Party. John Key has, you know, kept his distance. Do you think Goff has actually shown the leadership most New Zealanders want over this matter? No, no, no. It, it's... It... Goff is not the leader of the of, of the Maori Party, and uh, it's not for him to determine what happens to the fellow. That that discipline is solely for that party, and sure. I think John Key's done it correctly. But do you think Goff's advice to the Maori Party is right? Should Honey be expelled? I don't think that that's a, a realistic goer. Um, but I, I would make this comment that in politics, it seems as though enemies always get on much better than people that you would assume were allies, i.e. Labour and the Maori Party. And, of course, we see that time and again. Do you think Honey will go? No. Um, and I think it's been suggested here he's probably just enjoying the limelight as well. Mm. So, you know, that's a hilarious thing, you know. He's been, he's been pretty silly, he's done some pretty dumb things and he probably has ratings in many ways have increased, but I'm pretty, it makes me pretty cynical about them. 
Are you surprised the Race Relations Commissioner hasn't gone harder about this? No, no. I'm not, but then I'm very <laughs> familiar with the Race Relations Office, which at one stage came under a select committee, which I chaired, so uh, I'm not at all surprised. Sure. By the way, Rodney Hyde, um, he's managed to shake the perk monkey off his back this week after formally apologising on Sunday and coughing up the dosh. Do you think this was a case of very well-spun damage control or sincere mea culpa? <laughs> Congratulations to Rodney for apologising. I, I went to his breakfast. Um, I was sorry he didn't wear his jacket, but I now realise he must have lent it to you uh, for race week. I've got the green cousin. <laughs> yes, the green cousin. <laughs> but uh, no, good on Rodney. The fact was he was in a hole, and when you're in a hole, keep digging, mate. And Rodney uh, threw a bit of gravel back in. So uh, I think he did it right. Any lasting damage, do you think? Uh, yeah, I do. I think this will be permanent uh, lasting damage. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Rodney's ridiculous. He's been going on for years and years about these perks and <laughs> I don't need to go over what he did. But uh, I don't think the public is going to forget this. I think he's shot himself in the foot well and truly. It was interesting. It took quite some days before Rodney obviously decided the wolf's at the door here. Um, do you think there is going to be residual damage? I think there is. I think, I think Rodney likes to behave as if he's a man of real solid principles. Yeah. And um, I think he's shown here that those principles aren't so solid when it suits him he'll actually, he'll actually take advantage of them himself and I, th I think he has done himself real damage here and I think that's real, you know, I think he has, probably has got something to contribute and I think that's a pity. I, I think these, both of these fellows have never fallen in love in middle age. Uh, you, you, you're inclined to have a middle age crisis. What you Speaking from experience. What you wouldn't, <laughs> what you, what you wouldn't want to share with the group. <laughs> <laughs> what you wouldn't normally do, all of a sudden uh, a, a beautiful woman by your side and, uh, you know, I have to say poor old Rodney blew it, didn't he? Your crisis is going very well, though, isn't it? Uh, I'm in heavy <laughs> crisis right at the moment, uh, in, in a different capacity. Oh, but, true, yes. Um, now, of course, there is no doubting that travel perks um, seem to have become a bit of a hand grenade for MPs in these straightened economic times. The public seem very grumpy. Do you think all of these sagas that are playing out are going to force Parliament, uh, maybe via the Speaker's office, to review travel perks, particularly when they extend to spouses? Yes, I do. And it saddens me a bit because as we move on in life, the wife in a relationship of MP um, and wife is becoming more and more distanced. And uh, in the old days, she was the secretary, and now we have um, people employed by parliamentary services to do that. Now the wife's role becomes less and less. Uh, the parliamentarian's role becomes greater and greater, mm -hmm. and marriages break down because of it. Um, I think it's important that a wife does play a role as a partner to the MP. All right, Chris? Uh, yeah, no, I think that uh, every time this comes up, and um, I think we're going to talk about our local person, aren't we? We are. Um, I just scratch my head and think, these people don't seem to get it before they embark upon this sort of behaviour. When it comes to the spouse issue with parliamentarians, it is a very difficult one. There have been um, a lot of marriage breakdowns due to people becoming parliamentarians and spending lots of time away from their spouse. But, you know, you've got to, um, you've got to call a limiter. And I think that, um, you know, maybe they should just do away with all of these uh, extra perks unless perhaps it's proven that they're on a special mission long length of time, mm -hmm. something like that. OK, Roger. I think being an MP can be a pretty tough life, actually. I think we want to be a good MP. I think they work very, very hard. So I want to make sure we attract really good people into those offices. Yeah. Um, Do they need those perks as they may, or They may or may not need those perks. Of course, in the last 20 or 30 years, from whenever those perks were put in place, phone calls, you know, toll calls, yeah. travel, it's all become an awful lot cheaper as well. So in many ways, the perk has lost some of its glow. My issue would be, I want to just, I think we all just need to stand back and be a bit more mature about the fact that a lot of these guys do work very, very long hours, and we want to attract good quality people into those sort of roles. Sure. But the way they're abusing it, what appears to be pushing the limits, makes yes. it really hard yeah. for them to keep it. Yeah, and perception is reality, isn't it, yeah, in politics? Yeah. <laughs> All right, coming up, yes, the City Council's flying mission to Bordeaux and Meridian's latest Think Big, uh, Think Big Energy project has been scuttled by the Environment Court. We'll have a look at that. Do stay with us.